In this section of notes, we're going to be looking at Sub-Saharan Africa and their population patterns. We're going to look at um, how densely populated some of the regions are, but Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole is not. Uh, and then we're also going to target some of the people groups themselves. We're going to look at the diversity of the population uh, and look at how some of this region is still so less developed and so affected by diseases. Um, and kind of start to look at some of the reasons behind how corrupt the governments are as well as how bad these countries are doing economically. Uh, but we'll really target that in some of the later lessons to come. Hope you enjoy. The first subsection that we're going to target is the rapid population growth. So Sub-Saharan Africa is home to 10% of the world's population. It has the world's highest infant mortality rate and the world's highest death rate. Despite the large death rate, the RNI, or the rate of natural increase, is 2.5%, which is pretty good if you're wanting to increase your population. Nigeria was the most populous country in this region in 2001, with 126.6 million people and a rate of natural increase of 2.8%. Essentially, that's saying that in 50 years, Nigeria's population will more than double, if that keeps up. Population density and distribution. Despite its growth, Sub-Saharan Africa has few people in relation to its size. The population is not distributed evenly. Land and climate itself help explain these patterns. But you can see on these two maps, picture on the left is just your normal population density map. Picture on the right, uh, each dot represents cities that have over a thousand people in it. And you can see where they're located. Located in the areas with the best climate um, and located along the sea and close to waterways throughout the, the region. In comparison to its size, you can see the size of Africa here on the left with all these countries fit inside of Africa. The United States, Eastern Europe, India, China, Japan, the UK, Spain, France, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium, Netherlands, Portugal, and we've still got some gray areas that could probably be squished in. But this kind of shows you the sheer, sheer size of it. Uh, now, the pie chart in the bottom right is going... Uh, showing you the population distribution of the world by continent. Um, and right now, Africa is probably sitting at about 15%, but you can see that that is actually increasing as time goes on, especially with new medicines being introduced to this area that will keep the amount of people being born, um, keep them alive. That's going to cause a population boom. Now I want to look at population and food production. There's a big problem in sub-Saharan Africa. There's not enough food for the amount of people that's there. Uh, a lot of this has to do with the corrupt governments and how they haven't had a focus on uh, the health care of the people. Um, and they've been focusing on military rather than agriculture. But the climate also has created some of these problems as well. The map on the top left shows you uh, the farming systems and their locations um, in this region. The forest-based is uh, where your tropical rainforest climate is. Uh, and then your other types of farming, your mixed farming, are mainly located on the far north and the far south. The picture on the right shows you the change in cereal output. This is not like Captain Crunch cereal. These are like grains. Uh, and this statistic is predicting that most of this area will probably increase in its production, while some of the areas will actually decrease in their production of cereal grains. All right, now looking at population and health care. Only one-third of rural Africans have clean drinking water. Only a quarter live where there is adequate sanitation, also known as the disposal of waste products. I wanted to give you those two statistics to show you how the living conditions are, how bad they actually are um, in this region. And that leads to some of the things, uh, some of the diseases like AIDS, um, as well as Ebola. Um, kind of the reasons why both of these diseases uh, took over this region uh, and became problems in this region because they don't have clean drinking water, they don't have sanitation, and the population is so high that without these medicines, coming into contact with all these sick people is going to spread this disease even more, uh, and it's going to make it reach epidemic proportions. To, uh, the top left picture shows you uh, kind of the life expectancy at birth of a lot of these countries. And most of these countries are from 40 to 60 
That's how long you're expected to live. That's not very old at all. There's a big problems in sub-Saharan Africa. Some of it has to do with climate, but most of it's people-caused problems, especially all the wars that's constantly in this area, as well as the corrupt governments. But also, when we get to the history of sub-Saharan Africa, we'll see that European powers also played um, some part in how bad the government systems are today in this region. Now moving on to the actual ethnic groups themselves, the diverse peoples. Sub-Saharan Africa has more ethnic groups than any other continent. It's actually one of the large, also one of the largest continents in the world, but look at all the different people groups. Picture on the left shows you color-wise the different families, but then writes in the different people groups within those different ethnic groups. Picture on the top right is by a guy, a geographer, Murdoch, in the 1950s. He kind of speculated where all these different ethnic groups were located. And the picture on the bottom right is kind of the same picture, um, just done in a little different format than what you see blown up in the left. One thing I do want you to pay attention to here is you see the borders, the political borders of where these countries are today in pink. Like in northern Africa, you can see the borders here. In sub-Saharan Africa, you can still see those borders, but I want you to pay attention to the fact that these ethnic groups do not follow the borders, which is a big problem. This also causes a lot of the problems in this region um, because the people in each country are not the same ethnic group. That reason we'll talk about in history as well, but the reason these political borders are there and the reason the political borders are not around these ethnic groups is because European powers divided up the land that they controlled when they colonized Africa. There's, in fact, over 3,000 different ethnic groups in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, declining agricultural productivity is leading to more people moving from the rural areas to the urban areas. It's causing more of a rural to urban migration. And urbanization in this region is actually growing, which will probably lead to less ethnic groups because they will all start to combine as they start to live together. More than likely, if the country starts to focus on farming and pastoral nomadism, it is considered a less developed country, and a lot of these countries in sub-Saharan Africa focus on farming and, and pastoral nomadism, and then most of these countries are less developed. Within these countries that are less developed, the women are primarily engaged in subsistence farming, and they're only farming enough to survive. <laughs>